Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and we're gonna do an update on the situation with Reddit. I have spent so much time talking about Twitch lately uh, that I totally forgot about Reddit. So we're gonna talk about Reddit and how Reddit may never come back from the problems it's having right now. It's, it's user base turning on the company because they're looking to charge more for the API usage, uh, arguing that you know third parties are profiting off of them. Really, I think this is about ad revenue. I think they're not making nearly as much ad revenue as they were hoping to or they were making, and they're trying to force everybody uh, over to their app where they can monetize them more effectively. So we're gonna talk about that. A lot of media outlets saying that they think Reddit is down for the count, that it's probably never gonna come back as strong as it was before. Is is that a bad thing? I'm trying to figure that out because Reddit is, is ground zero for a lot of toxicity. A lot of toxicity, a lot of a lot of crazy people on Reddit uh, saying some crazy stuff and and uh, starting to come out now that uh, you know there's some political scheming going on behind the scenes at Reddit and and all of that. So maybe it's maybe it's a good thing that it burns. I don't know. We're going to talk about this. Uh, we're going to talk more about that API situation and uh, you know again how they're trying to push people over to their apps their own apps speaking of which uh, on their apps did you know that uh, some of them now support more languages like Dutch Swedish and Canadian French on Android so we're gonna give a shout out to our sponsor of this video Babbel Babbel can teach you to speak another one of these languages uh, fluently, very easily. We're going to talk about that for a couple of minutes and then we're going to get back into the video. Before we go any further, I want to give a special shout out to the sponsor of this video, Babbel. If you're unfamiliar with Babbel, it's one of the top language learning apps in the world. Babbel's intuitive lessons help you learn a language through real life conversations. I've chosen to learn Swedish because I'm actually a quarter Swedish on my mother's side and I don't speak any of it. I've done some fake Swedish on the channel before and I wind up sounding like the Swedish chef. I don't want to be culturally insensitive or anything, right? Plus, there's a bunch of Netflix shows in Swedish and the dubs are mm, lacking. We're looking for good people. How the f can you give little kids four grand just like that? Babbel is scientifically proven to help you start speaking a new language in three weeks. Lessons are designed by real language teachers. Babbel offers a 20-day money-back guarantee. Babbel teaches real-world conversations. Lessons prepare you to have practical conversations about travel, business, relationships, and more. So let's get started on Babbel. I've fired it up on my iPad. You can also use your phone. Look at this, we got our, our first lesson. Hey, it means hello. Valkommen. Välkommen. Wouldn't it be cool if it was Val Kilmer? Välkommen till Stockholm. Välkommen till Stockholm. All right, now things are getting a little more complicated. I need I need Geeky's help with you this. Do? I do. So we're gonna listen, and then we're gonna sort uh, sort the words. Hey, Abde. Hur mår du? Hey, Abde. Hur mår du? We got it. I could have learned Korean so I could have reinforced it with my Netflix K-dramas. I know, right? I'm sorry. Next time we're going to do Korean, but it is pretty easy to learn a language on the go with that. Okay, let's see. I've never done this at all. Okay. This is the first time I've done this. Ja, mår bra, tack. Och du? Whoa! See, look at that. Check out the link in the description and get 60% off on your subscription. That's 60% off on your subscription. Again, a big thanks to Babbel. And now let's get back to the video. Okay, guys, welcome back. Let's talk about Reddit. Lots of uh, lots of outlets, you know, complaining about the Reddit uh, API situation. And I guess I guess there is uh, more going on with moderators. I heard that uh, some mods were actually going to take their subreddits down completely, or they were going to be kicked off the platform by Reddit if they did not, you know, make their subreddits live again. Now, to to walk this back a little bit. Here's basically what happened. Uh, Reddit decided at some point they needed to make more money and they want to start charging for their API. And uh, again, a lot of third-party apps use, use their API, which has been free or low cost, and now they're going to charge substantially more, which is effectively going to put some 
I guess, competitors, users of that API out of business. And to protest, Redditors, mods have been uh, going dark on their subreddits. They've been going private on their subreddits. And uh, Reddit is not real happy about that. We're going to talk about uh, you know, the latest. According to you know, the CEO of Reddit, they're not, they're not going to walk this decision back. And look, this is a trend that we're seeing on a lot of social media sites right now that they have to make more money. Twitter, as soon as Elon Musk bought Twitter, you know, he uh, started ramping up the advertising, the paid subscriptions, and he started charging more for the API or charging for the API. I don't know if they were charging for it before, but I know it's actually broken a lot of apps that used to auto tweet to Twitter. In fact, some of our web websites, we can't auto tweet anymore because like WordPress, I guess they don't have access to the API like they used to or some such nonsense. But uh, people don't like it when they're charged for something that has historically been free or, or no cost. And this is the new reality. This is the new internet. You know, uh, very few things are going to be free. So let's talk about this. Uh, we'll go to the Wired article. Wired put this up a couple of days ago. Uh, the Reddit blackout is breaking Reddit when the user revolt ends, if it ever does, Reddit's community won't ever be the same. I love it. The first sentence, they're very correct. It's pretty easy to piss people off on Reddit, less so to piss off seemingly everyone on the platform. That is true. Reddit's mismanagement has succeeded in doing just that as it weathers protests over its decision to charge for access to its API. The ruling risks putting the company in a death spiral as users revolt, the most dedicated community caretakers quit, and the vibrant discussions move to other platforms. Uh, it doesn't matter where you go, everybody's going to be charging. I mean, that's the truth. And back in the day, like, look, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not making excuses for Reddit, right? But back in the day, if you wanted to have a community like Reddit, you had to pay to host a forum. And a lot of times what they would do is they would charge for membership or charge, you know, uh, to, to upgrade your membership or take donations or something like that to keep the forums online because it wasn't cheap, you know, the amount of bandwidth and, and uh, you know, the the amount of uh, taxation on your, your servers, you know, because you're dealing with so many users logged in at once doing a bunch of stuff. It's not like serving, uh, uh, you know, static web pages, right? So, they always had to offset costs. Then along came social media and we had Reddit and we had Twitter and Tumblr and all these free sites that somebody else was paying for. Basically, you were getting all the, the perks, the privileges of, of having a forum, having your own platform without having to pay for it. And people got used to that for the last 10 or 15 years. Now the money's run out. You know, uh, the money has run out. Now, uh, now we're going to see what happens when people don't get the internet for free, like they've been used to getting it uh, for free. Companies change to its data access policies effectively priced at third-party developers who make mobile apps for browsing Reddit, two of the most popular options. Reddit is fun, that's debatable, and Apollo, which together have over 41 million downloads are both shutting down. After some initial backlash from users and disability advocates, who said Reddit's changes would adversely affect accessibility-focused apps aimed at people with dyslexia or vision impairments. Reddit said it would exempt those apps from price hikes. Those apps have far smaller user bases than Apollo or uh, Reddit is fun. Reddit's plan, driven by an urge to make the company more profitable as it inches toward going public, Good luck with that. Sparked a protest across nearly 9,000 subreddits where moderators of those communities switched their groups to private mode, preventing anyone from accessing them. Many of those subs remain inaccessible four days later, and their moderators say they plan to keep up the blackout indefinitely. Uh, disclosure. Yeah, this is coming from Wired. Wired is a publication of Condé Nast, whose parent company, Advanced Publications, has an ownership stake in Reddit. Hmm. However unfazed Reddit execs appear to be, this subreddit seppuku sure does seem like a surefire way to sink the company, but does it really signal the death of Reddit? Okay, well, knowing that Wired has an invested uh, stake in Reddit, are they going to be fair about this? Uh, I can't see it as anything but that, says Rory Muir, an associate director of community organization for the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Like with Twitter, it's not a big collapse when a social media website starts to die, but is a slow attrition unless they change their course. The longer 
they stay in their position, the more loss of users and content they're going to face. Uh, I agree with that. I think that you will see users just kind of fall away. And I think what happens is sometimes people stop using an app or a website and they realize they can live without it. And they're like, you know what? I really don't need to be there. I don't need to be there. I don't need to be on Reddit every day. It was actually sucking up a lot of my time. I don't need to be there. I don't need to be screaming at people constantly. I don't need to be looking for whatever's problematic today on Reddit. The unrest at Reddit is the latest in a string of social media upheavals that have seemingly pitted profit-hungry companies against their users, platforms like Reddit, Twitter, or even Amazon that started operating at a loss. Okay, this is very, this is very key. They started operating at a loss in order to grow their user base, eventually face pressure to monetize their traffic. When a site sidelines the wants and needs of users in the pursuit of profit, that leads to a downturn and potential death of the platform, according to Cory Doctorow, who calls it in shitification. But the, the truth is they should have been honest up front and said, this is what it's going to cost you. You know, again, this is like drugs, right? <laughs> it's like it's like peddling drugs. Like you get it for free for the first five or 10 years until we decide we need to go public and we need to make money. And then we're going to just, you know, drop the hammer and be like, yeah, you're all going to have to pay. You have to pay because it's not going to pay for itself. If you were up front with people from the beginning and said, you know, you want to be a full-time Redditor, a full-time Reddit mod, you're going to have to pay. You know, you would have had a lot fewer users, but the users you had were, were going to be you know willing to pay for your service. Uh, any plan that involves endless and continuous growth is bound to run into scale issues, which is where Reddit and Twitter are running into problems. Eventually, yeah, you're going to hit a ceiling. It's the same with streaming. You're going to hit a ceiling. You can't inflate the balloon forever. It will pop at some point. Reddit has denied that it is specifically targeting third-party apps like Apollo and RIF. The company initially said that limiting API access is a move meant to control the flow of data being gobbled up by generative artificial intelligence companies like OpenAI. Let's pass the buck. Literally, let's pass the buck. In an interview with NPR, Reddit CEO Steve Huffman said limiting third-party access will help Reddit keep control over how it displays ads, the company's primary source of income, to users. This is the same, like every website you go to now has, has like the admiral, the ad blocker remover thing. Like, please, please remove your ad blocker. Or even worse, you can't view this website until you disable your ad blocker. They're shooting themselves in the foot, Mir says. The content of the users is what makes the platform worth visiting. Uh, these hosts kind of run into this confusion that they're hosting is the reason people are going there. But it's really for other users on the medium. It's really because it's free. Right. Reddit and Twitter, let's be honest, have attracted certain kinds of users over the years because it's free. And now they're all going to Discord and they're uh, having these uh, uh, these discussions about what's problematic on Discord. And eventually Discord is going to run into the same problem. Now, I do know that people are more willing to pay for Discord because they've been pretty upfront about it. like, hey, if you want to you know, boost your server or whatever. This is what you got to pay. But uh, again, when you have an all-you-can-eat buffet, you can't suddenly turn it into a regular restaurant, you know, a mom-and-pop sit-down diner uh, and start charging. You know, it's, it's going to be really hard for people uh, to, to wrap their head around that. Like, oh, we can't just go in and just have as much as we want for 15 bucks. Now we got to pay 15 bucks for a plate and $5 for a dessert and then whatever. And it's going to kill your business. However, if you start out as a sit-down table service restaurant, the expectation is already set. You see what I'm saying? So here's the thing. Despite the, uh, the backlash, uh, Reddit CEO says they're not negotiating. They're not negotiating at all. Uh, this is the CEO, Steve Huffman. He said, the analogy I like to use for Reddit is Reddit is a city. And what we're seeing today is a protest in our city. <laughs> uh, this is what he told the AP. Protest and dissent is important. The problem with this one is it's not going to change anything because we made a business decision we're not negotiating on. I don't think they can. I don't think they can afford to negotiate on this one. They're not going to negotiate with terrorists. I don't think they can afford to. I think they'd rather have you know, a third as many users that are all paying or, or are uh, being served ads 
then they would you know, have a whole bunch of people that are using it for free. The blackout's not over, organizers say. Nearly 9,000 subreddits want, uh, went dark this week. Reddit as a whole currently has more than 100,000 active subreddits. Uh, some return their public settings after 48 hours. Others say they plan to stay in private indefinitely until Reddit meets their demands, which include lowering third-party developer charges set to go into effect on July 1st. As of Friday, more than 4,000 subreddits were still participating in the blackout. Uh, the vast majority of subreddit communities are still active, Reddit notes. Yeah, most of the ones I went to, I, they're, they're still active. While Huffman maintains that he respects users' rights to protest, he also says that the subreddits currently participating in the blackout are not going to stay offline indefinitely, even if that means finding new moderators. Well, it's not a good look. It's not a good look to have half your site down, right? The company's response to the blackout has fueled further outrage among protest organizers, most recently after the move to replace moderators of protesting subreddits. A lot of what's going on here is Reddit burning goodwill with users, and that's so much more expensive than trying to collaborate. Again, the expectation was set. The expectation was set early on that Reddit was going to be free forever for everybody, and uh, that all of these uh, uh, mods had way too much power. You know, that it basically was like, this was like your domain. This is basically your website, your forum, and, and you just don't have to pay for it. And uh, now they're finding out who's actually paying the bills. And it's going to be a very rude awakening for a lot of people. But yeah, we're seeing the destruction of Tumblr, the destruction of Twitter, the destruction of Twitch, and the destruction of Reddit. And all of it is the attempt to uh, appease advertisers, chase profit, and you were all just the commodity all, all this time. It was all about building up the audience so they could monetize you with ads or they could monetize you by you know selling the company off for big bucks or they could monetize you by going public. You know, you're, <laughs> that's, that's the thing. And if, if you wanna have complete control over your stuff, you're gonna have to build your own website. You're gonna have to learn the code, I guess. That's, that's how it works. So I'm gonna wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.